Hey! Hey, welcome on to channel14.com's Bodega Nights. I'm Joe. My name is AG. And you haven't been on Bodega Nights in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, been, it's been a week. <laughs> it's been a week indeed. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, I know, since I, since I screwed up, like, um, since I screwed up naming the files and stuff, um, it's been less than a week. <laughs> I had it all set up, right? Like, okay, this is going to come out on Wednesday, uh, sometime in the evening. And, like, it was only on Friday that I realized that I screwed up the file naming and stuff. It's like, okay, it's a no. <laughs> but this one, this is going to come out on Wednesday. I'm almost sure of it because it's a holiday on Wednesday. Um, and you have time. Yeah, yeah. Like, horrible schedule for this semester, but at least... Oddly enough, yeah. <laughs> but, like, at least on Wednesday we have uh, Eid al-Fitir, uh, which is... Al-Fitir, yeah. Eid. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I know it is, um, I know it is Hari Raya, so... Or Hari Raya. So, like, shout out to the Southeast Asian Muslims. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, I just wanted to follow up on something from uh, <laughs> last week, man. All right, go. Just just for some, just for the sake of a bit of like continuity and stuff. Uh, just uh, I said something about like there isn't as much to study, right? Something something along those lines about like scientific discoveries and how everything has to be a team, blah blah blah. Um, I probably should have said something along the lines of the baseline knowledge required to be a scientist is like a lot more voluminous, if that's voluminous. the right word. Yeah. You pretty much have to study what others have already mastered. Yeah. So like, <laughs> and that's the uh, hard part. <laughs> Yeah, and so, you have to improve on what has been studied. That's pretty much what the thesis is, right? Yeah, I guess. So, you know, no... But then because there's just so much out there, it's a lot harder to be, like, that renaissance man, you know? Like, in order to be, uh, in order to be the best scientist in the world, you kind of necessarily have to block out a career in the arts. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. To be the best scientist in the world, you pretty much have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not gonna contest. Pretty much. Yep. Right? And and yes, I know that the guitarist of Queen is like literally a rocket scientist or something. And Greg Graffin from Bad Religion is a professor of evolutionary biology. But they aren't Stephen Hawking. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and uh... Stephen Hawking isn't... But the Dolph Lundgren is a uh, Dolph Lundgren is like a chemist or something, doctor chemist, and he's still pretty cool. I'd say he's up to par with Stephen Hawking. <laughs> yeah, and and so is Dexter Holland from The Offspring. Come on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, but that that's, that's sort of yeah. that was sort of the clarif- clarification, if any, if anything. Yeah, it's like a, there's so much because there's so much more to learn. It becomes harder to reach that sort of baseline like this is what a competent scientist is this is what a competent insert profession here is you know it's more of it 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 has i think not so much knowledge being stacked i think there would that's when more important than ever specialization has to happen yeah since you won't be able to or are trying to go niche um so say since you can't master everything, specialize on a field of study that hardly anyone anybody touches. For my case, I mean weird that I'm applying it to the arts. For my case, it's pretty much contemporary Filipino photography. Yeah. Nobody's talking about that. Nobody's touching that. <laughs> and the flip the, the the sort of flip side of that, and this is the defense of the liberal arts. Mm-hmm. Um you kind of need to have a very broad understanding of a lot of 
different things and apply that into your chosen specialized field. Otherwise, we wouldn't have that sort of... We, we all wouldn't be speaking the same language, right? You, you, you need somebody that can put stuff into context and you need stuff that... Yeah, you... Well, the thing I, the, the thing I loved about, like, the liberal arts education that we had was what it kind of trained us to do was try to see if this particular, like, framework applies to this particular field of study. And it's mm-hmm. only if you have this sort of broader kind of knowledge that the you liberal can, arts. Yeah, that you can sort of start to try and do that. And then you hyper-specialize. Yeah, I think, uh, say, uh, what do you call this? A paleontologist will have a hard time dealing with uh, astrophysics. Yeah. So well, somebody that. who's yes, yeah, somebody who's familiar with literature would understand the narratives that the narratives that happen with images, for for example, or something. Somebody who's familiar with uh, like something obscure, say uh, Arabian history, would pretty much have I- idea on what's happening in Southeast Asian literature. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 So there's there's that, and then, like from the from the field of study or from 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 the liberal arts sort of field of study, it's sort of the the theses that we tried to do were, um, say like applying this particular theoretical framework <laughs> from uh, literature and like trying to shove it into you know seventeenth century Philippine history. Mm-hmm. That sort of thing, you know, like looking at uh, looking at history from the point of view of the philosophy of art, that that kind of thing. Um, looking at just say freaking the economics of, uh, like like the, the the things that those guys from that uh, from from free economics, like the things that they do, the stuff that Honorico really loves to do. Mm-hmm. Like let's let's take economics like, and put it in the context of gardening, you know. <laughs> but it's, that's not econometrics, right? Econometrics no is different because <laughs> I think econometrics is about measurements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, but you what know. he says is applying the eco- economics and um, the frameworks and the processes in the minute or mundane things, right? Well, not necessarily the mundane, but something that you wouldn't sort of expect not not expect but something that you wouldn't think economics would work with the the whole everything is a remix kind of thing mm. right so you take you take contemporary philippine photography and you apply your marketing background <laughs> well interesting that's right? when because, the good photographs know, happen and you actually don't think, oh, my life is photography. <laughs> when you live your life is when good photographs happen. Yeah, I, I guess. But you, you get the idea, right? You take this and you see if it works with this. You put yeah, this pretty and much. Apply the, apply it, uh, and, and apply pretty it much. to this. Pretty much. So, you know, there's, uh, so there's, there's hyper-specialization, but then you sort of need to have a broad view of other stuff. That way, one, you don't get trapped in the echo chamber that is your chosen field and um, and also so that you can sort of push the boundaries of the different fields that you might find some sort of interest in by trying to bring something else into the mix, you know? Yeah. Because, like, screw, like, purity of subject matter. <laughs> I mean, there's difference of keeping the purity of the subject matter and not growing not pushing the work forward, not challenging the medium. You can yeah, be loyal yeah. to, the, to your medium or, or to a certain process. But if you ha- say that, especially for something as democratic as photography, if you claim that, oh, this is the only way, well, screw you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm, and, I'm, um, and I'm talking about applying that to, like, broad, broader, to, to something broader, like fields of study. Yeah. Right? 
I mean, there is, I, I guess there is a place for, say, like, pure mathematics, but, you know, without physics and math sort of doing their thing. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, mm-hmm. Blink-182, though. <laughs> uh, I haven't listened to the entire album. Just the first, the, like, the premiere. The prim, Not the premiere. What's it called? Carrier single. Yeah, yeah. They, they released, like, three songs early or something. This is This is really weird, right? Because, like... I don't really talk about very current music, you know? Like when I say, oh, Strung Out's new album, like that that pretty much came out like four or five months ago. But <laughs> now it's just like <laughs> breaking news. Yeah, you're talking about an album that was released literally yesterday. <laughs> As of time of recording. <laughs> yeah. It's really good, dude. Like like I I didn't expect it to be a really good album, you know? Because, yeah, because I was kind some of, of their, yeah, their previous releases have been, heh, to say the yeah. least. I mean, they were the, the previous releases were okay, sure, but I mean that was them trying to like push their sound or whatever. But I think what makes this album like really good is Matt Skiba, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe that's just like the Alkaline Trio fan in me being like, oh, it's Matt Skiba. <laughs> it's the Alkaline Trio fan in us, <laughs> Matt Skiba. <laughs> Oh, right? and um, I mean, th- which means they picked the right person for th- for for them to be able to push this album forward. Yeah, yeah, it's, it 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 sounds um like the guitars sound a lot crunchier, which is which I, I guess you can really that that boils down to just the tone of Matt Skiba's guitar, um. And well, it, it also could be like the influence of John Feldman on the album as well. Uh, it's it's got like a a bit of a more like it's, it's got a rougher sound, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It's it's Matt Skiba. <laughs> <laughs> and we like Matt Skiba. Yeah, and well, I, I guess I think it's like towards towards the uh, towards the end there, like. Goldfinger, their their albums started sounding really like slick and overproduced, but then that might not have been John Feldman's quote fault. But anyway, oh, yeah, John Feldman is the dude that produced it, and he is also the singer of Goldfinger. Mm-hmm. So there, apparently, he's like a really good producer. Um, it reminds me of a time that. Well, anyway, going going back to Matt Skiba. <laughs> um, <laughs> It reminds yeah, me like a high schooler. <laughs> yeah, because like that that's when I listened to Alkaline Trio, man. <laughs> like um, like elementary into high school. Uh there was, there was a time that I was talking to Tech. Yeah. Remember him? That yeah, was, that yeah. guy from school. Yeah. Um we we were talking about the Alkaline Trio because he was like, "Yeah, man. This band is pretty cool." Yeah. They're really cool. Um and he was asking, or he had this observation that they're sort of clumped into, or they were at the time, like clumped into the the general like genre that is emo. Like, and so he was sort of lamenting that, you know, mm-hmm. saying that oh, is Alkaline Trio really emo? Like, no, they can't be. They're too. I think the word that he used was they're too rough. To be emo. Yeah. And that's how I would describe Blink 182's new album. Oh, nice, 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 nice. nice. Right? My, it's my, a lot my more thing rough. Is, there was a list that was like top 10 most influential pop punk bands. And uh-huh. I'm not sure if you saw that, but I forgot which website it came in. Ugh, I'm not, I don't want to even look it up. But uh, it was pretty decent. Although I don't consider Alkaline Trio to be pop punk anyway. But I'd wish they'd be in there, in that list. Eh. But who pop cares? Punk is like just a, a, yeah, it's yeah. a catch-all term. Yeah, it's pop punk is like a really weird genre of music. If you really sit down and think about it, because confusing. If you ask me, it's really confusing. Yeah, because like a lot of people will credit or will will classify. Say like the Descendants as a pop punk mm-hmm. band, and if you listen to 
you know, Milo goes to college, mm-hmm. or yeah, if you listen to like a Descendants album from the eighties, and you listen to Sugar Cult, they're like worlds yeah. apart. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, or is it because? It sounds punk and it became popular. That's pretty much the the category. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess. But then it also has like like um you have like these quote pop punk bands that never really made it to like pop culture or whatever. So I don't know. It's weird having labels and stuff. Yes. Yeah, so it's so it's either we have this horrible like term like pop punk as a catch all, or you know, or we get into the minutia that is like subcategorization and metal. Yeah, yeah, which is too much. That's too much. <laughs> <laughs> like if you look at the different types of metal that are available, you you really do get this feeling that for. Every band that falls under the umbrella of metal, there is a genre specifically like named for them, you know. Or probably they again going back to their earlier topic, they tried to push it in different directions, P- push it to where nobody has been to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's obviously the goal, you know. Um, but what happens is there's always a new um <laughs> there's always a new genre <laughs> that yeah, they there's... push. So each new band is a different genre. That's <laughs> like a new genre that's created depending on how many strings you have on your guitar. Like <laughs> <laughs> and how fast you strum it. <laughs> yeah. Um but then I don't, and uh, apparently, like, um, apparently, electronic music is like that as well. You know, uh, one of one of my cousins that did the whole DJ thing mm-hmm. was trying to educate me on the different like subgenres of electronic music. You know, like, like to to me, like, I can't tell the difference. Right, I can't tell. Well, yeah, I guess I can tell the difference, but. I wouldn't classify them as different subgenres, you know. Um, say I wouldn't, I wouldn't call Dead Mau Five and um, Danny Tanaglia like I wouldn't call them radically different, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But my cousin was like, "Oh no, they're blah, 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 like, uh huh, yeah, sure." You know, like one of them is uh, Dark House or Hard House or something like. Yeah, Dirty mm. House was like when I heard Dirty House for the first time. I don't even know what compromises house. Does it have a father, a mother? <laughs> Where do you put the foundations? <laughs> and why are we making it dirty? Like, yeah. And I so, guess because yeah. I'm turning thirty in a few months, I have come to a point that I stop caring about other things, and that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, but then yeah, I, I guess apparently what um what what constitutes uh the different like subgenres of electronic music is the bass beat. But then I don't know. Uh, yeah. Again, it's uh, music is not my thing. I just listen to what I enjoy, and apparently, according to Spotify. What I enjoy these days are <laughs> wrestling themes, which is oh, okay yeah. because I like yeah. wrestling themes. But Shinsuke Nakamura's is just, just lovely. Like, I don't even know. Like, there's a resident band they have, CFO Cash. I don't know if that's or CFOS. I don't know because <laughs> it's a dollar sign. <laughs> but that that person, dollar sign, huh? band woman. Sorry. I don't know who she is. Yeah, he said person. Is really good. He is really, really good. He's like it's just like this one old guy that like composes all of their music, right? I don't. I think that old guy retired already hey. because he didn't make Shinsuke Nakamura's. He didn't make AJ Styles. 
Okay, so it's... Nakamura is probably one of the best entrances ever made, and Sami Zayn's. Oh my God, who? who I, I I would I don't I'd never known. Like I never imagined the day that I'm gonna hear ska in in WWE. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves, right? What? Like, is it really ska? <laughs> Sami Zayn's. Listen to Sami Zayn's. Yeah, 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 yeah. It just doesn't. It doesn't feel ska. Third wave. Yeah, it doesn't feel third wave ska. Really? It There's feels. A horn. It feels like it, it feels like electronic music with a are horn you section. Sure you're listening? Really? Yes, the drums are too clean. Fine, <laughs> that's why I'm not music. And I, the reason I don't like music anyway is because of the so many subtle nuances. Yeah, that's why I hate photography. No, there's no nuances. It's democratic. So is music. That's why there's nuance. No, there's there's so much nuance in I know in in music pictures. If it's a good picture, it's a good picture. Don't care about the genre. Well, fine. Those who make it painful are other people, of course. The ones who need to make everything mm, academic but the beauty yeah. is if you're just creating don't care about don't care about how people will place it so i always yeah, like, said to uh, people leave it to critics to put your work into place yeah, your job is to make that's work. The, the the exact same thing can be said about music if it's a good melody it's a good melody i don't know i thought there was always like ways to make a proper melody uh, because I can make random noises that I think would look good. Apparently, it's shit. Uh, it it depends on. It's uh, are you John Cage? Is the question. Um, <laughs> are you John Cage? <laughs> the 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 dude that composed four minutes and thirty three seconds. Um. Uh, it's just silence, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you know, because there there are some schools of thought in the field of music that will argue against the idea of uh, a melody necessarily having to be tonal. That, yes, random noise does constitute a melody because the melody is the main idea of the piece. See? Nuances. Yeah, in the same way that freaking Yellowstone, the, the Yellowstone Park collection of Ansel Adams is nothing like the work of Bresson. There is. Well, yeah, fine. They're both, <laughs> like, yeah, they're both images and they're both black and white. But then when it comes to music, they're both sound. So what compromise is it? So constitutes. You mean different between what constitutes uh, music, song, and that music, song, sound... Uh, why are all of them different? Yeah, in the same way that photos are different. No, they're not. Pictures are pictures. And songs are songs. No, a song could be music. A music could be a sound. And a song could be sound. When a picture is just a picture. So you would say that there is no substantial difference between a picture on your phone and a picture that's printed out? There is no uh, at least in the difference. object. At least um, as an object, of course, there's difference because one is tangible, the other isn't. But the merit, there's no difference. Yeah, same with music. I mean, there is no difference. No, no. I mean, in the merit, how it is between... made. Because the way you consume pictures is by visual. But some would and say, the "Oh, this way you music. consume music is auditory." No, <laughs> not by consumption. Fine, I made the wrong point. But there, the, what I'm saying is there are just a lot more nuances with music. That was my original point. You're saying the same with pictures. No, it isn't because a picture is just a picture. When a music could be sound, a music could be a song, a song could be sound, and a picture is nothing else but a picture. So you don't mix it up with an object. So the contents of the picture don't differentiate the picture. Yeah, it's all a picture. Regardless of what it is a picture of. Yeah, but there are, of course, different genres for, you know, for the academic purposes, for criticism purposes. But say with music, the differences 
when you say like like the original example earlier it's so hard to decipher saying that this is oh what i was to sami zayn's entrance music that it was um i thought it was ska you said it isn't because this nuance that nuance oh yeah well, yeah but then, sideways but when you look at then, a picture it doesn't matter it's still a picture now yeah would the nuance be that, that the differences comes when you go or the nuances comes when you go to the nitty-gritty of uh what do you call this the nitty-gritty of of say a certain uh style or aesthetic at the end of the day uh when, when you look at the style or aesthetic that's where it becomes uh not necessarily tricky but there's where you t- t- try to go to be a bit academic because you have to identify oh this one's street but not necessarily or it has that element but in the end of the day it's just a picture yeah and the same can be said for music because at the end of the day it's sound but it's not a song what constitutes a song and don't ask me you're the one who should be defining that right so what's at the, the difference at, at the, between at all the very, three of them right so at the very heart of music right like my favorite definition of music is sound organized in time all right does and some song people, involve and and some people so, argue so, that organization mm-hmm. isn't an essential element but i would but um it is sound organized in time what is your definition so, of a photograph a uh, picture exposed to uh, to, uh oh, yeah. light sensitive material uh yeah uh, light exposed to a light sensitive material creating an object not necessarily digital or uh, I'm pulling all this on top of my head so yeah me too that, that, that's tangible the beauty of this. <laughs> but you've always been you always had that definition for a long time and at the end of I mean not I'm gonna use at the end of the day for the fourth time it should be a <laughs> uh, what do you call this a drinking game um, my, my, my thing is and how this argument is gonna defend is gonna end I am not going to defend photography as oh it's Ah, bias for a fart. No, it isn't. But I'm gonna kill for photography and say it's the most democratic medium. Like everybody can do it. Everybody can understand it. Not yeah, everybody yeah. can. Not everybody can do music. No. Nope. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not arguing that point. Yeah. Because I no, do. By, I do by agree. The mere that... fact that they're saying that there's nuances in images means not everybody could understand it. Oh, so you're talking about reception? Not because just the reception, reception and the creation. Making. Because everybody can make pictures. A chimp can make pictures. And, and it's not even uh, take 10,000 pictures you're going to create. A chimp would be able to make something good. Not because of numbers. Just because the sheer under- by sheer visual understanding. Which is, which is why, you know, the, which is, I think that was the argument of that judge who said that the pictures owned the selfie. Uh, the, the, the chimp owned the selfie pictures. Which I don't agree with, but hey, did, because I do think that, what didn't didn't they resolve that case by saying that the image belongs in the public domain? Nope, belongs to the chimp. Really? So the photographer can't. Or probably you're saying a different case, but I know that the, the, the selfie, chimp, chimp. selfie, yeah, yeah. Uh, he owns it. But should, I should look it up. I, because my uh, my understanding of the case gonna was make my duck, no, sorry, it's gonna make my duck duck go weird. <laughs> I mean, if I was searching it on Google, Google would find me weird, because oh, he's looking for selfie chimp. What? Who in their right mind would put in selfie chimp? But uh, uh, monkey monkey selfie. There's uh, actually uh, there's actually a Facebook this... page called Selfie Chimp. Oh, okay, it's it's a photo book. Oh, it's a what call this? Went back. Uh. Stater continues. Wait. Right here, here, here. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. The U.S. Okay, Copyright Office. Opinion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Uh, stating that works created by non-humans are not subject to copyright. Uh, so the so reason... technically, and it is photograph taken by a monkey. So it's in the public domain, but under photograph taken by a monkey. Yeah. So the monkey has no copyright over it. Which yeah, is why the specific. photographer has no claim over it. Not because yeah. it belongs to the monkey, but yeah, yeah, because yeah. it belongs to the world. Okay. Sad for the monkey, though. 
but it's okay because <laughs> it's <laughs> my 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 point. I guess is I was able to create something decent. The monkey. Well, like now, if we want really to put nuances on it, is this happens? Everything has a nuance. I'm just gonna shoot myself and sleep. <laughs> yeah, isn't isn't that like your job? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> That's why I told you when, like, last week you're saying, but what is art? No, don't go there. (laughs) Don't. (laughs) No. Don't, don't. Because it's it's like, um... It doesn't rile me up because it's what I think every day. (laughs) Yeah, but but then this is is where I see the the, the parallel between photography and music. Because, Mm -hmm. like I said, my favorite definition of music is sound organized in time. But there are people that will contest the uh, word uh, organized. Organism. Yeah. Right? Because that implies or that that brings up the question of like who organizes it? Do you need to have any sort of training to organize it? That sort of thing. And um the same and the same argument can pop up in photography. Oh yeah, people would would say that, but eventually people tend to realize, at least those who grow, that it's a democratic medium. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I, I, but then, like, I, I really do believe, though, that photography is the most democratic medium. Yeah. Because the barrier of entry is just that low. Yeah. Because <laughs> second I think only it's to lower. podcasting <laughs> <laughs> or blogging. Third to blogging. You only need to learn a language to be able to blog. <laughs> oh shit! <should, should>, by that, by that definition. Wouldn't that make like literature the most democratic or poetry? Nah, because you need to learn how to speak to be able to write. Not speak, but you 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 need to know language to be able to write. Yeah, yeah, but then like a lot of a lot of um, a lot of the definitions of poetry don't really involve writing. A lot of it is spoken, or at least so you need to speak. Yeah. Uh, for images. You need to see, for it to be deliberate, you need to see light and you need to have a way to push a button. Okay, so here's, here, here's, here's a question. But that's two things, so it's not democratic. Sorry. Oh, no, here. <laughs> it, is, it is possible. <laughs> Can't be a photographer, sorry. Yeah, that, that, that's, that, that was it. <laughs> it is possible to have a deaf poet because a deaf person is... Uh, capable of some form of self-expression. There are Perhaps. entire sign languages. But can a blind person be a photographer? Uh, I always say no. I always say no. He could make images. But what I always tell people, what will separate your work from any other people's work is your deliberateness. Or what my mentor calls intentionality or intention. A mentor of mine says that. Yeah. Which, so which, if you can't see light, you would be able to create images even if you're blind. You do. But you won't have the right intention unless you absolutely create the conditions for you to be able to have that intention, even if you're blind. Which, which brings me to another question. Okay. Can a person that became blind be a photographer? Yes. But a person that was born blind cannot. That, that for me that's tricky because it like you know the the that question do blind uh, people dream yeah and and like it's pretty much like that how are they gonna process the world how they how do they process light so I'm not sure well, you see? I would I would think that the the dreams of blind people aren't visual trippy probably trippy as hell right yeah, because yeah because what dreams are just like your uh Okay, we're gonna go. F- uh, we're gonna be using like Freudian terminology here. <laughs> is that not? Is that not your subconscious processing, like your sensory input from whenever? Mm. Yeah, because it's. No. I kind of, I kind of ascribe, subscribe. I kind of like to believe that as well because uh, I always see, you know, some some people I've met on the street or somebody like you know, you know that theory, right? That the faces, some of the faces on your dreams are some of the faces you meet on the street. Yeah. So it's all sort of based on 
your sensory input. Yeah, and if if science is to be believed about sleep, it's the way the brain, like it's it's your brain trying to reboot. So mm. a dream is pretty much a cash dump. <laughs> ah, that's that's a it's a it's the blue screen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So going back to the question, yes, I, somebody who is who wasn't originally blind can be a photographer. Yes, especially if he has prior knowledge, he or she has prior knowledge of of the photographic process and making images. Yeah. But somebody born blind, I think you could possibly do that, but it is really going to be tricky. Yeah. It, it's going to be so insane, but I think you would be able to do that and to be deliberate about it. Because again, in one of my favorite movies of all time, Pecker, <laughs> there was a blind photographer who feels portraits and see, and <laughs> who feels portraits and uh, touches landscapes or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I guess I can sort of, I, I guess I can sort of see how that would, and that uh, man that was a work. That, that blind quote. That blind photographer only uses um, what they call this uses a point and shoot. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see that working if somebody say does portraiture, and like that. That I'm I'm sure that person could take a competent shot with like say autofocus of and course. stuff. Unless you want to talk about like artistic expression and stuff, and like autofocus oh, be damned, right? Yeah, but, I mean that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be a different <laughs> podcast and might end up with a fist fight with people. But <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, on a side note, like I was a uh, because uh, it was the Anchor Photo Festival deadlines, right? And being an alumni and whatnot, some of the older folks are telling me, "Hey, G, since you're a photo." Sort of a photo writer, photo critic. Now, why don't you uh, why don't you like, look at the works of, of these kids and like, work with us? Okay, so how we're we gonna do this? So our system was like three photographers who are senior. We're gonna look at the works and we just have a system of a yes no. If this work is a yes, we put it in the wide edit in the big in the in the main edit. If it's a no, uh, it's it's out. And it has to be a unanimous yes. Okay. Like three out of two, at least a seventy-five percent yes, or an eighty percent yes, pretty much that. All right. So, when before we started, so all right, everybody ready with your groups and our assignments. All right, let's do this. We have a few hours, and let's grab order drinks. All right, let's do this. But before we begin, no fist fighting, because <laughs> I've seen editing sessions that ended up with fist fights. I'm like, what the hell, man? I. I, I don't know. So yeah, you're probably right. There's a lot of nuances with images, especially with people. If, if people already know a lot, like have a lot of visual literacy. Yeah, I mean the the same just applies to any art, any I sort guess. of art form. I guess so. Like nuance is inevitable because of human nature. Uh, or is it because of craftsmanship? And we do things differently where we all process things differently each individuals yeah no, yeah. well you said human nature so that's pretty much it jesus it's a, it's a nice catch-all term now if we're yeah. going to define if, if we're going to look at what constitutes let's, jesus christ it's not <laughs> it's not oh my god oh my, it's not a human nature the humanities are already in crisis <laughs> the humanities is already in crisis and 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 we shouldn't add to that crisis anymore. <laughs> we shouldn't be in... We're not even in the academe. Fine, I want to be in the academe. But... Oh, yeah. screw it. What is human nature? <laughs> I, well, I wasn't talking about, like, what is human nature in its broad sense. Of course, but... because we're going to be here all day. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is going to come gonna answer. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna answer. Um, Do you ever wonder why we're here? This <laughs> is pretty much. <laughs> um, but uh, what was it? The the reason for nuance is human nature. But then what what parts of human nature create the nuance? It's the craftsmanship of the individual and our very human need to categorize. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna go in because, because, you know, we are social beings and yet we want to yeah, have our own personal expression. And thus, that's where a conflict happens. But I like the fact that, yeah, humans like to categorize things. Yeah, because, you know, because each person has a distinctly, like, unique handwriting or whatever. And we have this, and, and we feel the need to categorize. And if we, if we take that to its logical conclusion, each individual's handwriting is a category unto itself. Oh, and geez. that's, oh, and that geez. is, <laughs> and that is metal. Right, or <laughs> we could just say like, "Ah, screw it, let's have a catch-all term for everything that's thick." That's pop punk. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing it back. <laughs> yeah. Now I I I have brutal legend. I should reinstall brutal legend because I'm 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 trying to like not to suffer burnout again. I'm giving myself time to at least play games for thirty minutes to an hour a day. Yeah. And I realized yeah. that Civ 5 is not the best. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not the best de stress game. It's like, hmm, hmm. Because I, I'm still thinking too much. I'm still thinking yeah. too much with Civ 5. It's fun. It's great. Amazing game. Like, oh, I don't know why I only played it now. <laughs> yeah. We call this. Um, uh, Hiawa, I, I, uh, as an homage to my grandfather, because he also sees Hiawata as mm -hmm. character, the leader of the Hero Coins. So we went up against Gandhi, who's trying to wage war against me. I don't know why. <laughs> Fall people, Gandhi was the one. Why you, is you don't Gandhi know that bug? war? What? You don't know that. that that's a, that was a known bug in the first Civilization game that they just sort of that's kept what? in as a, as a joke. Because Gandhi's aggression is set at zero. Mm -hmm. as a, as a default or by but default they're... now if you subtract one it doesn't remain at zero it loops back to the like, highest like... yeah it loops back to 99 <laughs> and it's an rng uh i don't think so like i i think that it's you know based on this factor and that factor or whatever basically the bottom line is that once you hit the bottom line, you loop back to 99. Mm. Which is why Gandhi is the most warlike. Because <laughs> his... <laughs> because his aggression is set at zero. <laughs> <laughs> and then, give it... Yeah, there's a Kotaku article. Why is Gandhi an a-hole in Civ? Yeah, so so like it was a known bug in the first Civ game or whatever. Yeah, it's in the first Civ game. Yeah. yeah, and then they just kept it in as like a running joke. So <laughs> there's the answer to the question. Yeah, they program which is, him, which is pretty cool because like a lot of well, the last two Bodega Nights episodes at least have been more questions than answers. <laughs> and seriously. Every time that, I guess this is why I, I want to be away from Bodega Nights. Especially if it's just the two of us. Because it becomes like dissertation levels of discussion. Like, I, I was going to say, we could talk about wrestling, then I realized we just did a takeover. <laughs> <laughs> An invasion slash takeover. And, uh, oh, like, we, can we talk about stupid stuff next time? <laughs> or, is, or the reason why we're friends is because we overthink stuff. Heck, we overthink things that, to the point that, yeah, we should make a podcast. <laughs> and here we go. In a few weeks, episode 100. Well, yeah, huh? Episode 100 of Third World Linux is coming out in like two yeah. weeks. So it's like... Or a week. I the basis know. of our friendship is because we overthink. <laughs> the basis of our friendship is because we just talk about stuff too much. <laughs> <laughs> to the point that even if we say, I don't want to overthink this, I'm going to be goaded back into it. <laughs> so that, yeah. that, should be, that should be like the Channel 14 mantra. <laughs> like, we overthink stuff. <laughs> the Channel 14 mantra is, don't overthink stuff. <laughs> and then here's Bodega Nights. <laughs> <laughs> Overthink? 
Not enough. Is that not what makes, like, podcasts entertaining? That people take a train of thought and, like, whereas in regular conversation you just stop at a certain point and say, oh, God, it's really hot, or, oh, it flooded yesterday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but then, like, with, with the podcast, you're sort of afforded that opportunity to follow a train of thought <laughs> until, until your brain starts to hurt. Fight. Okay. <laughs> I still can't believe. Uh, hopefully, I mean, God willing, I'm still not in a fist fight. <laughs> not in a, not in a, what do you call this? I have never been in a fist fight because of photography. And, and I've even heard like people, it's on the internet, like, oh, where do you live? Like, let's meet up at this place and I'm going to show you. Like, <laughs> what's the point? What's the point? <laughs> You know, if, if if that's the case, um, I take like, pictures of that fight. <laughs> I think that's that's what makes like hardcore like like people that listen to hardcore so like chill. You know, <laughs> like you, you you've met hardcore kids, right? Like those yeah. people that are into stuff like like terror and hate breed and stuff. They're some yeah. of the most chill people I know. Yeah, they're because, so happy. They're so happy. Yeah, because. Because when their favorite bands come out to play, you have the Circle Pit and all that. Like, I, I think photography needs something like that. <laughs> like a sort of controlled kind of aggression, you know? <laughs> like, you just have a slideshow <laughs> of photos. And you have people, like, moshing or something. <laughs> a slideshow with mosh. <laughs> Oh, that is an amazing picture! <laughs> no, it wasn't. That's not her wall of death. <laughs> Slide show and then you slam yourself to the wall. <laughs> oh, God. Why? <laughs> you wanted to talk about stupid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's a really retarded idea. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, when you get your wish, you you wish like just a few notches, not not that exactly. <laughs> what is the next time you go to the Angkor Photo Festival? <laughs> like you guys are moshing in the French quarters. <laughs> 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 